Hey, William from the Zombie Star. This week in comics, uh, trying to do this on a weekly basis. Some of these didn't release this week. Some of these are farther back. But uh, probably one of the most unique titles that we're still following is uh, we talked about Crossover uh, before uh, from Image Comics. Number two came out uh, earlier this week and still I feel just one of the most unique titles right now uh, to read. Donnie Cates and creators are putting together this narrative where uh, there's a break in reality, there's this massive event where actual real, well, actual superheroes that we know in, 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 in the comic books that we read now have been able to come into our reality and wreak all this kind of havoc. They're, they're not good guys in any way. Um, and number two kind of con is now focusing on a group of characters and, you know, with a particular goal, solving the mysteries of how this could happen. This comic book is so strange, uh, really is aware of itself, comical in that sense of just how bizarre it is, um, and really knocks on that fourth wall where, you know, it's, it's just referencing so many things in your reality. Um, for instance, Robert Kirkman, very popular Walking Dead creator, is a person in this comic book who's gone missing. He's gone missing. He's a comic book writer and creator, and he's gone missing as other famous artists and creators have after this bizarre event has taken place. Crossover. Really strange, really off the beaten path. If you want to read something really unique, I think this is really a standout title. Uh, Spider-Man. Haven't talked about this one. Uh, we did see uh, its release I think this started in 2019, honestly. This might have been, this first started last year, went on hiatus uh, during the pandemic. So we did see the release of the conclusion of this Spider Man run uh, released this week. And this is issue number five that we saw the release. Uh, the probably the biggest thing that drew me to this comic book itself was the creators. This is written by J.J. Abrams and his son, Henry a Abrams. So obviously, they constructed this story of Peter Parker. Uh, he's a lot older now, and he's dealing with his teenage son, Ben, Ben Parker. Um, so you can, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of a strong father-son story where they go on these adventures together. But I felt they really did a good job to really implement some uh, real issues. When, uh, you know, in this story, uh, Peter Parker is a single parent. There's a, there's a reason why uh, Mary Jane Watson uh, is not is not involved, uh, but he is a single parent raising a you know a, a, in in a sense a troubled a troubled teen in in, in Ben Parker. So um, really love the issue, kind of love that relatable kind of reality in it. On top of it, just being also a a Spider Man story, um, and watching Ben kind of grow into his father's shoes. But of course, Peter living the life that he did is very reluctant. So a very good read. Um, we did see some variants come out. This was a really cool one. <clears throat> um, obviously, I think it just it's a theme that just really plays that this is an issue about reflection. It's, you know, Peter Parker looking at himself and the many years that, that he's had as Spider-Man and now the fear that he's having now that his son is taking over that mantle. So this was a standard cover. And this is, uh, I believe this is just a another... Uh, lettered cover, but we did get an incentive variant. This is a Pacelli 1 in 25. <clears throat> Sorry for that break there. Our Pacelli 1 in 25 of Spider-Man. This this is a really cool um, kind of depiction of, of really, again, the theme of this story here of uh, really Peter kind of has a troubled father and Ben is kind of, uh, Ben Parker kind of uh, struggling to deal with, with everything that he's discovering about his father. <clears throat> that was a very interesting read. Uh, one of the things that released this week that we were really excited about is uh, Batman Black and White. Uh, we're huge fans of the figures, and we, re I mean, when I first saw that Greg Capullo was did the cover for uh, the main cover, um, well, I was just, you know, overjoyed. Huge uh, Capullo fan. Just amazing artwork. Batman Black and White. Again, just this is a black and white comic book. Uh, in the same, um, in the same. Art, art or in the same form that they that they put out their figures okay the the black and white figures uh what this is is actually a collection of short stories marvel did something similar or is currently doing something similar with wolverine black white and blood which we did talk about before and again it's just a collection of short stories here though i really feel they really did uh kind of do something a little bit different they wanted to make it a little bit more original as as there's even like some sort of like 
there's a poem in here, you know, this Batman related poem. Um, and it's, it was very interesting. It's a very interesting read. I think this was also a celebration, a lot of the artwork and the artists that have worked on Batman over time. There are some amazing pinups, um, in this issue. And this was just a lot of fun to read, but you got to love that artwork. I mean, that's Capullo, classic Capullo right there. Uh, and we did get, uh, variant covers for this. <clears throat> I believe this is Williams. This is the Williams cover. Uh, and this was just, uh, this might be cover B, cover A, I'm not really sure. Uh, but the standout one, the one that I just completely just was overjoyed and fell in love with. Huge Peach Momoko fan. I collect almost anything that she works on. But this is Peach Momoko's uh, variant of Batman Black and White number one. And of course it's of Talia Gould. She does play a role in one of the stories here. So I mean, check that out i'm just a huge fan of her artwork and uh, really the style that that she takes so this is uh this was a really cool pickup but the star of the week really was star of the week. we have seen an end to a or at least the be end of an arc of daredevil and kind of the beginning of another arc uh currently what's happening in the daredevil series is he's gone to prison he's gone to prison and we're just gonna see all the fun that's happening with that so issue number 25 was kind of a uh, momentous occasion, it being issue 25. And the the uh, kind of the most sought variant cover for um, number 25 was by uh, La Roca, if I'm saying that correctly. And here is the one in 25. We haven't read this one. I don't think, I don't think we're going to read this one. I think I'm going to keep it exactly. Uh, the way it is you guys are getting more of my computer screen than the actual cover but this was a 1 in 25 variant that we picked up this week and uh, this is the one that was released I think maybe two weeks ago I'm not sure but uh, yeah this was heavily sought I was very lucky that I was able to snag one and I mean the artwork is just amazing absolutely amazing um <clears throat> uh, Manga. We did pick up. We did pick up our manga this week. Demon Slayer number nineteen. Huge fans of the show. I'm a huge fan of the manga. Um, I haven't read this one. I'm still behind on some volumes. There's there's so many uh, that come out. Um, but yeah, this this was released this week as well. Demon Slayer number nineteen. I'm just a huge fan of of this type of artwork as well. Um, and of course, Demon Slayer. Amazing show. And it's actually an amazing amazing manga. If you guys are not reading this, read it. Something special. Uh, Big Time Collectibles is a website. I'll leave a link for it in the description. It's a website that uh, we ordered some very specific and very exclusive things. And this is kind of a reveal because I'm, I'm pretty sure about what it is. Um, but, I mean, I just want to get excited, you know, naturally. So, um, I'm going to open it now. So, this came in. This is from Big Time Collectibles, comic related. If it isn't, then I'm just totally going to mess this up. If this is not what I'm pretty 100% sure uh, know what it is, if it isn't, then I'm just going to look like a fool. But <clears throat> if it is what I think it is, because Big Time Collectibles, I've only ordered one thing from them, so it's got to be what I think it is. So it is a very special comic book that uh, I found online and just had to have. And if I can get this open, this came straight from just... USPS <clears throat> so packaging looks pretty good it's a pretty big box uh, that it came in and it's not moving around so I am happy about that come on now, come on this is boxed up pretty well pretty pretty well I want to be careful with it because what's inside is very unique. Okay, we got it open. Come on now. With the amount of practice that I get opening boxes, you would think I'd be good at this by now. But I'm not. And I'm just destroying this box, but it is a USPS box. I cannot reuse this. Okay, a lot of, a lot of bubble wrap here. Oh man, yeah, it is what I thought it was. All right, so this thing is all wrapped up. 
Okay. Oh man, this is gonna be cool. Open! This was released on Big Time Collectibles. I didn't see it anywhere else. I do not know if this was available to pick up at any comic book stores. You guys let me know. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I do believe they're still available. I don't know if they sold out or not. But Big Time Collectibles is a website that has some pretty exclusive stuff regarding comic books. Uh, variants, signed, and even graded by CGC. And this is what this is. Wow. A lot of bubble wrap. Okay, I just want to open you. Alright. You're getting cut bubble wrap. Alright, so... Oh no! Obviously I'm a huge Spider-Man fan. Um, Todd McFarlane in the 90s had his own run of Spider-Man, um, which was uh, a really cool. It was really a take on his own. I believe this was around the same time that he was also working on his Spawn. Um, and one of the first issues is, is, kind of, is a pretty uh, popular issue. It's very recognizable as it's Spider-Man kind of surrounded by his webbing. And, I mean, if you know Todd McFarlane, his artwork is just so identifiable. And uh, it's just his style of Spider-Man. Um, knowing how Spawn is now, her, knowing how Spawn was in the early 90s, you can just, again, his, his work is just so identifiable. You can spot a Todd McFarlane from far away. So, when Peach Moko, who we just finished speaking about... Let me see, where is she? There you are. So, Peach Moko, okay... When she did a, let me take it out of the bag. When she did her own uh, concept art of of the same cover that Todd McFarlane worked on, this is Spider-Man number one. It was called Torment, part one of five, okay, by Todd McFarlane, and uh, this is her take on it. And this was on, and this was available on big time, uh, big big time collectibles, on their website. And of course, I got my. 9.8 oh but this is beautiful absolutely beautiful um i kind of love that you know it's it's a little bit you know anime mixed in with you know the wet with westernized kind of art and concepts i really just believe it makes for unique uh unique work here and see here's the back there's the big time collectibles uh, insignia and this is even Kind of a uh, so a really unique comic okay <clears throat> i don't know if these were released uh, raw or just on their own um but when i saw the 9.8 cgc peach Momoko variant <clears throat> how could i not how could i not so yeah several things this week um we saw the conclusion to spider-man uh with our variants <clears throat> So this was really exciting, really cool. J.J. Abrams and Henry Abrams collaborating to create this really, I really think it's just a very charming father-son, you know, story. Short, only five issues. Um, our 1 in 25 Daredevil, this was a big time snag. So happy we have this. Uh, crossover number two, this is a very unique read. Highly, highly recommended if you really want to read something different. Um, and of course, the beginning of this Kind of celebration of, of the many years of Batman and all the you know all the talented artists that have worked on it. Um, it's going to be a lot of fun collecting all these. But our star, oh, don't forget Demon Slayer number nineteen, y'all. This is an amazing book. It's an amazing story. It's just amazing. But check that out. We finally got in. I ordered this a while back. This took a while to get to me. But this is my Peach Moko, uh, Spider Man. Uh, number one of Torment, Peach Moko variant. And that'll be it. Here at the Zombie Star for uh, for this week in comics. And hopefully we'll do this again next week or two weeks. I'll see you then.